Okay, so it is my absolute pleasure, of course, to be joined by the number four ranked featherweight contender in the UFC. Arnie, first of all, mate, before we get talking about fights and all that good stuff, how is uh, how's the old second home of, of Canada treating you? When was the last time you were out there? Uh, it was been a while before. It was I was back in England for a couple of years, but uh, obviously having the fight over it made sense to be training over it. So uh, it's it's fucking freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. It's good though. The training is good. Everything's good. It's it's funny that like you. Because you fought in Canada before, right? When you were when you were training there more frequently. No, no, no. But you haven't. No, I've been, no, I've been training here for years, but no, this is the uh, first time I fought here. Yeah, I mean, it's worked out. Uh, that's worked out pretty well then. And I guess, like you know, if there was, if it was a different UK fighter that was was having to go over to Canada, I'd be like, that's a strange one. But it, it, it like I said, it is like your home away from home, uh, even mm-hmm. though you haven't been there in so long. So it works out quite well. Um, yeah, I mean just because you actually get to be there and you don't have to worry about getting back and stuff right yeah exactly yeah so it's nice it's nice to be out here like i'm it's like a 45 minute flight to the to toronto so it's not that bad it's down the road I could probably drive it it's a couple of hours but yeah yeah so it's not too bad sweet right um i want to go back to the max holloway fight um mm-hmm. and to start with on that fight the the thing that i found watching it right i i've been watching yourself fight in in and you've had plenty of big fights before that um have, have felt like a step up but obviously for for uk fans that have been watching you for a long time they've also been watching max holloway fight nothing but the best guys in the world for however yeah. long it is at this point right so it, it was a trip even just to see when the fight was announced you're like oh man arnie's fighting max holloway that's crazy like hmm. Did it feel different to you compared to some of the big fights you've had in the past? Because you have had main events in the past even, but yeah. I imagine the prestige of a Max Holloway fight and the eyes feel bigger. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it was definitely bigger, but like it, it just felt like another fight really, you know. It was... Um, I didn't really think about the opponent too much, like who he was, what he's done, all that sort of stuff. It doesn't really... You know, once you start watching this tape and breaking down the fights, it just becomes another another guy, so... You don't really look at the accolades and the things he's done. So, yeah, it just becomes just becomes another another opponent, another guy to break down and sort of figure out. But yeah, with with a guy like Max, like I said, he's been fighting at the top level for such a long time that you're you're not going to be short of footage for for yourself or or for your coaches to get stuck into. Um, mm-hmm. Was there something that, like, I know that it's like the typical Joe Rogan question to be like, was there anything that surprised you about the fight? But considering how well most people know Max Holloway, right? There isn't a whole lot of surprise to his game at this stage. Yeah. Was there anything he did or just something that you didn't expect about fighting him that caught you off guard? Uh, yeah, he just, uh, just played a different game. You watch all his fights, he just played yeah. a different game. He didn't, uh, you know, you watch Max Holloway, expect him to walk forward and he's going to outwill and outlast everyone. But he, he was playing a bit of footwork and dancing around a little bit more and moving, made me chase, so... Yeah, yeah, he just played a different game and maybe a bit stupid on my behalf, expecting just the same thing he does every fight. But you watch all of his tape, he does the same thing every fight, except that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I don't feel like it. In maybe other circumstances, I would have been like, ah, yeah, what was what was the plan B? But I feel like you, there wasn't a need for a plan B. I've I've never seen Max fight any other way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was it was it was strange to watch, but um, it was a great fight. And then the the bit at the end of the fight, I'm sure people have mentioned this to you a bunch of times. But um, as fight fans, I feel like uh, it's very easy a, a lot of the time to sit and watch a fight and go, "This guy's down on the scorecards. He needs to he needs to throw the kitchen sink at him here." Like this is a yeah. huge opportunity. No one can ever accuse you of not doing that in your career ever because <laughs> not only against Dan Hooker where you threw the kitchen sink at him, you did it again at the end of the fight. When you look back on that, is, is it something that you find difficult to watch because you're like, ah, I made a mistake there? Or are you, again, like, again, what I just said, you have to try something to to try and end the fight on a, on a high? Yeah, no, exactly that. Um, nah, it's not difficult to watch. It's a... Uh... Just trying to win, you know, like just throwing uh, caution to the wind with your hands in your pockets. It's just trying everything there is to to get the win, and yeah, no, if anything, that's more more to be proud of rather than sort of accepting defeat and and uh, 
just to go, ah, oh, yeah, I lost, whatever. You know, like trying everything and throwing all you got at it. That's the best way. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of fans kind of resonate with that as well because um, it shows a different side to your game, right? Because your style is so for the most part, the opposite of those moments of chaos. It is so calculated and and yeah. strategic. So when you get those moments, you go, this guy isn't in there just to try and scrape a decision. Like this this guy, you know, he has that other gear he can he can go to yeah. when he needs to, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always a always an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean the, the option against against Dan Hooker was was well and truly activated. That is still <laughs> one of the craziest displays I can remember. Um talking about this comeback fight then, uh Movsar Eve Loyev, UFC 297. Um we've spoken about the fact that it's in Canada. So um I suppose the opponent is the the, the main thing to get to because it, it feels like to me that when people talk about the strength and the depth of the featherweight division for a long time, you were the guy that people would reference to be like, look at the win streak this guy's on and people still aren't talking about him. That's how good the division is. Right. Yeah. And it feels like Evloyev is kind of in a similar position where he's starting to get those bigger fights. I feel like he's still, you know, you've had a few more of those now at this stage. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, this is the really big step up for him in terms of the rankings and things like that. When you look yeah. at Evloyev compared to the guys around you in the rankings and also the guys that you fought, where do you think he matches up? Because a lot of people have been high on him for a long time. Yeah, uh, that is very high, very highly touted. Um, I think there was some easier fights with higher ranked guys, you know, like, uh, yeah. Uh, if we were asking straight up for um, Ortega after the Holloway fight, was you know the bigger name, the bigger fight, and obviously he was out for a while. And then yeah, they, I think they just kind of want to make him and Yair a rematch. I don't think that's what they're doing now. But yeah, there, there's some easier matchups, higher ranked guys, like I say. But uh, you know, I I think he's a very credible opponent, and the rankings are kind of chosen, aren't they? So if you if you go on. Um, what is it? The, uno the the official rankings, not the UFC's rankings. Like, uh, what is it? The Matrix Fight Matrix ones. He's much higher than they have him. So, yeah, he's a uh, yeah. It's a tough test, and I think beating an undefeated guy and taking his taking his hype and taking his undefeated record away that that's a lot bigger than sort sort of beating maybe a number three guy that's on a skid or something. You know. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of the the way the lightweight division has played out, right? Where you have some of those guys at the top, um, to compare it again back to featherweight, like your Ortegas and your Yair's who have been in the division for such a long yeah. time that maybe, you know, maybe they don't feel like they need to fight a guy like Yves Loyev. But uh, yeah. people have, you know, touted both yourself and him as the guys that are going to be there in, you know, still in five years and mm -hmm. still at the top of those rankings. So is, is there kind of a... Your, your mentality to take in this fight it just seems very like, well, I'm going to fight him at some point anyway, so why not do it now? Yeah, I always thought, if you want to be the best in the world, you got you got to fight the best guys, right? So if you're a champion, you can't pick and choose who the contenders are. So it's going in with that same mentality. Of like, what am I going to do? Sit there and be like, oh, well, what about this guy? <laughs> now, nah, nah, like, it's an interesting puzzle. And that's what is fascinating with, with MMA. It's like you always get different styles and, the uh the training camp to prepare for a different style and bring in different guys and solve different problems that's that's what's fun about mma you know yeah um i don't want to obviously get your thoughts on the the big fight that's coming up on the the event after yours uh volkanovsky who i know you're a big fan of um and to Ilya Tapuria, again another guy that people have been looking at for a while now as, as one of the mm -hmm. future faces of the division yeah. I know that you're a huge admirer of Volkanovski and what he brings to the table. So I'm curious, how much do you think Tapuria can can cause a serious threat to him? Because a lot of people are thinking that he might be the toughest guy for, yeah. for his reign so far. Yeah, I think he causes a lot of problems for Volk. And uh, I mean, especially coming off that knockout loss. It's, I've seen him in interviews saying like, you know, it's not affecting, it's not an issue, it's, not, it's nothing, whatever. But, you know subconsciously those things are is still there and he was is as dominant as he's been at featherweight but um yeah it'll be interesting i'm glad they put it a little bit later to be honest because you know i wouldn't have <laughs> he's had such a great reign at featherweight it'd be so crap if just a stupid mistake like rushing back super soon and then letting him fight and 
not being a hundred percent. You want to see the champ compete a hundred percent, right? If he yeah. if he loses his belt, fair play, but you don't want there to be any like, oh, he fought too soon or you know whatever. So yeah, but no, I think Tapuri has got great skill set, well rounded. He's got good wrestling. He's got good, like really good jujitsu. We haven't even really seen much of that. So most people have seen just his boxing, you know. So be interesting to see what he brings, how he deals with Volk. Uh, yeah, that, I'm not sure how he's going to approach it, but we'll see. Volkanovski is always ready for anything, so it will be interesting. Yeah, should be exciting times for the division. Uh, start a new year with, with those fights. And obviously we've got Josh Emmett coming up against Bryce Mitchell. That should yeah, be a yeah. big fight as well. Um, and like you said, I believe Yair and Ortega are going to run that back earlier in the in yeah. the year as well. So uh, a lot going rematch, on. They're just rematching for a title shot over and over. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually, you know, you'll get a decisive winner and then and then we can yeah. move on. I fucked up losing the Max Holloway, didn't I? I would have broke the curse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, honestly, I, I, that Holloway fight is still uh, just uh, such a such a one of a kind fight for me to look at because we spent the whole time talking about how your style matches up with his and this, you know, all of these things, and then Max flips the script, and I, I you know, yeah. this credit to what him, but <laughs> just he just had to keep it going, didn't he? We can't have yeah. no new title contenders. Oh. <laughs> yeah, every time. Um, as I say about big things happening in the featherweight division, the final thing I wanted to to mention to you: big things happening back home in the UK that I, I'm sure you'll have some thoughts on, mate. The price of meal deals these days has gotten out of hand. I, I don't know whether this has changed your love for them uh, to any degree, but I, I'm starting to weigh up other options at this point, man. Uh, well, bringing a sandwich from home or something. And if it's not the same, is it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I know. It's, the whole world's gone mad with inflation. It's bullshit. And, and like meal deals are the best way to like cap it up when the price of meal deals is going up. You know you yeah. ain't getting a mortgage anytime soon. <laughs> what are the options what are the options like in canada what what do you have a substitute uh piss poor options i had to be honest piss poor don't like don't eat at the services like don't, do not do not get food from the Wait, services. Are they, that, uh, because i know that you're a big fan but most people would say that about uk services i feel yeah like. no no the sandwiches in england are like a level above like the level above they're Oh, no, don't eat at a service. They have so like um in Quebec they sell like bag cheese and stuff. It's like greasy bags of cheese. It's nasty. Don't uh it's literally sat there like where the till is, like it's uh to entice you to buy this dirty cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do it. <laughs> That's that is mental. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time, mate. I know that we've got quite a while to go before the fight, so I wanted to get this done nice and early, you know, not to, to take up too much of your time when things start getting busy, because I'm sure they will do. And because uh, this fight is going to be one that people are going to be talking about loads in, in the weeks leading up to it, because I, I think it's yeah. an absolute banger. So thank you so much for your time, mate, and enjoy the entire rest of your day. <laughs> thank you, mate. Have All a good one. No worries. Cheers, man. See you later.